Welcome to the presentation of the file hierarchy system which is in Linux. To start the topic, what I did is I did a list of my root directory and these are the items that I got. It's got these directories like bin, boot, dev, etc, home, lib, lib64 and so on. The next slide has a diagram of the common F file hierarchy standard tree. This is what it looks like. You have got bin, boot, dev, etc, home, lib and so on. And all of these are inside the slash root directory. Just a single slash is the name of the root directory and uh, sometimes when people are learning Unix and Linux they don't actually are able to see the tree and they just accept the word tree. So you will see images in courses like this one that I showed you before and this one and this one. Now if you can't see the tree what I'll do is uh, the ICT people and the computer science people they call this a tree so what I'll do is I'll turn the diagram upside down so it's easier to see what they mean by a tree. Now you can see that the root directory is below and the other subdirectories are above it and the slash is the root. This is how it relates to the tree. When the subdirectories are presented in a different way they look like the leaves of a tree and the root is represented by the slash. Now we shall start with what is in each directory and explain what is in it. The first one is we'll just take the bin directory. Bin is the short form for binary and uh, it's got programs which uh, when programs are made they're written in a high level language which humans can understand. The examples are like PHP, C, Pascal, C++, Python and there are hundreds more. These languages are compiled into a binary form which the CPU can run. The technical term for the CPU being able to run it is called execute. In some systems you will see the word executable files and the short form is exe files. In Linux and Unix they are called binary files and bin is used for the short name of the directory. Some people might call them bin files too. So the bin directory which is slash bin contains the commonly used uh, files related to the operating. For example one example is ls which is like dir in DOS it's for listing files and cp is the short form for copy like in DOS if you have a DOS background. Technically not all files uh, are actually binary files they can be scripts so they can be written in a high level language which is interpreted when they are executed. They are, they are called uh, batch files in some systems and in Linux and Unix they are called uh, scripts. The scripts can be written in languages like shell, python, bash, there's these strange names for these directories. There's also this point of having scripts and binary files inside the directory also applies to uh, slash bin, as bin, user bin and user as bin. Even though the word bin is inside these directories not 100% of the files are binary files. Now we go to the next directory which is the slash boot directory. Uh, there is a system which starts a motherboard which is on the motherboard itself it's called the BIOS and this stands for basic input output system which is BIOS and uh, in some cases some older BIOS systems they need the starting of the operating system to be near the starting of the hard disk which is sector 0. So in some cases the operating system has to actually make sure that uh, the starting files are located there that is why the slash boot directory was created it's actually a separate partition which has to be located near the beginning of the hard disk and the slash boot directory is where uh, the actually located there and but newer systems the slash boot directory is in the same partition as the slash directory doesn't have to be separate and does not have to be at the beginning of the hard disk but this is just a technical issue from old systems but it's just to know why you have a separate boot directory and what it is for. Uh, whether your system needs it or not uh, the kernel will be found there 
that's an executable copy of the kernel um, and uh, the starting files of the um, main operating system. The kernel is basically the uh, name of the core part of the operating system which manages all of the hardware. Next we, we shall be talking about the dev directory which is slash dev. Uh, all of the devices in Linux have a file associated with them on all of these device files are located in the dev directory. If you read or write to a file in this directory, you shall actually be communicating with a device. For example, if you give cat slash dev slash audio as a command and you use this greater than sign, that means put the whatever comes out of reading that dev audio file into slash tmp slash file dot audio. There's another directory called temp which you can use for making files. This is a temporary directory. So you shall be actually reading dev audio and whatever comes out of the file goes into this file in the tmp directory named file.audio. What will happen is since you are reading the dev audio file the mic shall be turned on and you will be actually recording audio into the file called file.audio and if this command will continue as long as you keep it running until you press control C then the recording will stop and the file will be and the file size of file.audio will stop increasing. Then to see what has happened you can say okay whatever is inside file.audio which is located in the slash tmp directory you say cat slash temp slash file.audio and you say put that into dev audio. Now you are writing to the dev audio device. Now what will happen is you can hear what was recorded from the speakers. So this is an example of reading and writing files which actually activates different devices. Now we go to the etc directory. The slash etc directory, etc is the English term for etc. But uh, this used to have a lot of other stuff before but in Linux and the file hierarchy standard they, it actually stands uh, and represents all of the configuration files. So almost all of the programs that are in the, installed inside the Linux machine. They shall have their configuration files inside the etc directory or some subdirectory inside the etc directory. This way if an administrator wants to back up the configuration of all of the softwares he just has to back up the etc directory. And uh, to restore the system we just have to install all the software from the CD and the internet and uh, just restore the etc directory and all of the programs when they start they shall actually read their respective files and get back to what they were doing before. Now some softwares if they don't have extra data files or do not use a database then like for example proxy servers, DSCB servers or routers they shall work perfectly and uh, that way the administrator can back up a whole system in just a few megabytes. For other applications which have a database or they are using other files in other places in their other respective directories, they need to be backed up. But the important point and reason for having the system and this separation of configurations and data and programs is that the administrator can avoid having to copy all of the programs in all of the bin directories. I mean he does not have to or he or she does not have to copy any of the binary directories at all and they can be installed from the CD or the internet. The next one is the home directory and we shall continue this. Uh, this was just a demonstration to check the audio quality in the presentation format. So we'll be continuing this later. Thank you for listening.